I often get asked the question, should I buy an iPad or should I get another Windows or Mac OS device? And usually to those people, I tell them to buy an iPad if all the apps that they need to use work on it. But if they don't, then maybe consider it as a secondary option. But as iPad OS has gotten a lot better recently, I thought maybe I would give it a try now that I have an iPad Air myself. So here's how it went with one day using the iPad Air and switching from my MacBook Pro. In the mornings, I don't do a whole lot. Translation, I consume my breakfast while consuming a YouTube video or two at my desk. Yeah, not exactly a tough task for this M2 equipped tablet. But I must say the iPad is actually a pretty good device for this since I've got a big screen compared to my phone and it's easy to move around. Speaking of which, it's time to head over to school. All right, so before I head to school, I do want to preface one thing. Since I don't have a keyboard case for the iPad, I will be using this Logitech K380 and a Magic Mouse 2. I'll just be keeping these in my backpack so I can use these to kind of interface with the iPad when I need to type stuff or maybe use a mouse. So we'll see how it all goes. I may end up not even using these much, but we'll see. But I am packing those, so I do want to just say that. On a typical day, I try to get to school a little early to check emails, respond to messages, and deal with any other minute tasks. Right now, I'm preparing for a few finals I have to start my day with, but otherwise, my classwork and most classes are usually basic enough to be done through web browser, so I don't have any big issues that come up with using this iPad. One thing to note, though, is that some programs from the Google Suite, which I use all day, require their subsequent app to make edits, unlike on a desktop. The apps aren't bad themselves, but I prefer the layout of the programs in the browser. If you're someone that bought an iPad and used it every day though, I could see you getting used to that pretty quickly. But it takes some adjustment as a Mac user. Same goes with some of the gestures if you do decide to use a mouse. I found myself not fully understanding where the mouse was at all times, as it snaps into different elements and buttons on screen. As I said before, I suspect this will be less of an issue if you use an iPad full time, However, I still find myself preferring the predictability with a regular macOS cursor. But I can also understand why Apple wants to differentiate the iPad's cursor and interface design versus the Mac. And it's these last two points that really bring home what I've learned throughout the past day. And that is, if you use an iPad, use it like an iPad as often as you can. Using things like a mouse is not an ideal option because the iPad isn't designed for that. Use your finger or use an Apple Pencil. That's going to be the most optimal way that I've found to interface with the device. In my opinion, using a keyboard is fine since there's a lot of writing that you may need to do day to day. And if you had to handwrite all that or punch it in with your fingers, that would get tiring pretty quickly. But otherwise, don't try to treat this like using a Mac or another Windows device. That's kind of what I fell into the trap of during the morning. But by the end of the day, I stopped using the mouse and just used it like an iPad. And since this is an iPad after all, I had to use it for its most fun purpose. Big screen gaming. Okay, I don't play anything that intensive, but a few rounds of Subway Surfers with some friends can't hurt after a long day. All right, I just finished up school right now, and one thing I have to mention is that my backpack does feel a lot lighter without carrying two devices around. The MacBook Pro is about three pounds, so that definitely takes off a good amount of weight. And I also don't feel as anxious as it was during the morning because driving to school without having my big laptop with me that I normally do all my editing and all my work on, that was a little bit nerve wracking, but now it's the end of the day and honestly, I was able to get through everything fine, but we'll just see about things when I get home and try to plug it into my bigger desk setup. When I go home, one of the first things I do after grabbing some more food is to dock my laptop into my desk setup with an external monitor that makes getting homework done less fatiguing on my eyes, especially after staring at a comparatively small screen at school. When I first plugged in the iPad by default, the screen was mirrored with big bars flanking the left and right sides. Thankfully in the settings, I was able to customize this to extend the display. That made it much easier to fit more windows onto the display. But again, I ran into the same phenomenon of attempting to treat this like a Mac when it's really not. That workflow is easy when you're using a computer that primarily interfaces with a mouse and a keyboard, but this doesn't. That means I'm back to using the odd to me cursor, but at least we do have the same functionality to extend our windows and add new ones side by side. That's a big improvement over only mirroring the display like iPadOS was once limited to. Now the last use case during my day is an important one, video editing. That's how I make videos for clients, my school, and of course these YouTube videos here. And that's the one use case I won't be attempting yet. Thankfully, I didn't have any projects to work on today, but otherwise I wouldn't be able to do the ones that rely on having Adobe Premiere Pro. I can use things like Final Cut for iPad or iMovie, but Premiere Pro is an essential app for me. There are other applications out there that other friends I've talked to are worried about support with. If you're a developer, apps like Xcode aren't available on iPad, despite it being made by Apple and despite this tablet having a ridiculous amount of performance to handle it. Other performance like battery life has been great as well, 
but does decline faster when plugged into an external monitor. So what's the conclusion then? Well, I would say that if you have an open mind, the right accessories and the right app compatibility, using the iPad as your only computer in a sense, I think it's totally doable. If you have more questions though, feel free to leave those in the comments below as I'm continuing to use the iPad. Also, while you're down there, hit the like button, consider subscribing to more tech content, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Tech Device News.